Thank you. My name is Bridget Rivera and I'm with Lumen Learning and welcome to the Waymaker English Composition 1 webinar today, this Friday. Hopefully it's beautiful where you are. Um, today I'm joined by, I'm really excited to be joined by two people, Audrey Fish, who is a professor at New Jersey City University, who will be sharing her experience with Waymaker and how she uses it to teach composition. And my colleague, Wendy King, who is our product manager for this course, um, and she'll be able to dive deeply into the course content and answer some of your questions. Um, really quick before we start into the, oh, here's actually what we'll be covering. Um, the introduction, which you just went through, here's our agenda. Uh, we're going to get into the new English Comp 1 course, uh, content and resources that are available for that course. Then we're going to have Audrey share her experience using Waymaker to teach composition, and we will have time for some Q&A. Um, we do want to keep it interactive, though, as much as we can. So. Um, you can enter any questions. We'll be monitoring the chat, so feel free to answer, um, enter any questions you may have there. Um, so a few things right before we get started is we are recording this webinar and I will be sharing it with you via email after this. So feel free to rewatch or share with your colleagues. Um, we'll also, as I said, monitor the chat, so enter any questions or comments you may have there. Uh, we do support the following learning, learning management systems, Blackboard, Canvas, D2L, Brightspace, or, and Moodle. Um, we will be showing the course in Canvas and Blackboard today since the majority of attendees and registrants um, are using those LMSs. But just know that if you're using Moodle and D2L or Brightspace, we do also support those LMSs. Um, you can try the materials, your LMS. So if you, after this webinar, want to import these materials into your LMS to see what they look like and how they could be used with your students, you can do that and there'll be an option for that in the follow-up email. And finally, you can always reach us at info at lumenlearning.com and I will post that email address again at the end just in case you don't have time to write it down. So I'm going to actually go into some polls right now though. So let me actually pull up the first one. Um, we'd like to learn a little bit about you. So I'm gonna pull up the first one, I'm gonna launch it. Tell me if you see it. Great. Um, and this is anonymous, so don't feel bad. Uh, feel free to be as honest as you want. <laughs> Your names will not be tied to this. Great. Looks like most of you wouldn't be wearing PJs right now. It is noon in the East Coast, so. <laughs> Great. It sounds like most of you are, have answered. A few more. Awesome. All right, I'm going to end the poll now. Give you another 10 seconds to answer. Great. So it seems like I'm going to share the results. Um, most of you are not wearing your PJs right now, and you wouldn't at noon East Coast time or 9 a.m. West Coast time and what's in between. Um, so congrats. <laughs> we know it's been crazy times lately. So um, let me share the next poll. Um, and this is, you know, we do want to know a little bit about what's going on out there with courses and your students and you. Um, so these next two questions will help with that a little bit. So I'm going to launch this. So for your upcoming composition courses, are you using print materials only, a combination of print and online, online only, or are you not requiring your students to purchase anything? So we'd love to hear about this. I think there's still a few of you. Give it another few seconds. Great, and here are the results. It seems like the majority of you are uh, requiring materials that are a combination of print and online. So thanks for sharing that. And let me get to the last poll question, which is for your upcoming composition courses, whether it's the summer, fall semester, whatever um, the next ones are, are you teaching uh, in person, hybrid, online, or other? Okay. Great, I'm gonna end that. Thanks for sharing and here are the results. It seems like the majority of you are teaching online, but there is still a good amount of um, hybrid courses taking place. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, that helps us really, you know, get an idea of what's going on out there since things are changing pretty rapidly. 
So with that, um, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Wendy, who's going to get into our new our courses. So take it away, Wendy. Yes, thank you so much, Bridget. Um, it was fun to learn a little bit about you. Uh, I actually got ready today. I'm not in my PJs, um, but I would fall into the camp of I just changed five minutes before this meeting. <laughs> um, but I'm so happy to, uh, to share more details about the course with you. And so we have two new courses really um, coming out in the next month. Uh, so we already have the English Composition 1 course fully available. So there is a cartridge available for that. And I know some of you are existing Lumen users. Um, and so this was an extensive revamp of the course. And so unfortunately, it will require a new course cartridge. So if you've used a cartridge in the past, you would need a new one at this point. Um, but it's really simple. And for those who are not Lumen users, um, to, to install the course um, into your LMS, it takes a matter of seconds, minutes. Um, so very easy um, and very customizable. So I'll, I'll get to that in just a moment. But um, so the English composition course um, is available. We also have an English comp one with a co rec component available at the end of the month. Um, I'll just speak to that a little bit as well. Um, but first, I want to dive in and show off the comp one features. And so a little bit of background about the Comp 1 course. We've developed it out of a few different courses. So the Writing Skills Lab, which was um, a great work created um, by folks at the University of Mississippi. Um, and so we've incorporated some of their pieces, including their, their latest modules on reflection and revision. Um, we've also built from bits and pieces of like existing OER and other courses, um, including our integrated reading and writing at College Comp. Um, in, our, in our previous English Comp 1. And so what we've been doing um, throughout this process, oh, I don't know what I just clicked on there, sorry. Oh, let's go to the next slide. Um, uh, we've really done a very thorough revision process. And so Audrey, who's on the call with us, has helped us um, as well as um, probably six other um, faculty throughout the, the nation, really. Um, and so we've gone through, we've identified key learning outcomes, um, reviewed existing content, organized the content, so it separated it by modules and sections, authored new content to make areas more robust where, where things weren't quite um, up to speed. Uh, we've also developed practice questions and added in interactives. We've written self-checks, added quizzes, added discussions and assignments. I mean, so really, what, what does this mean now? Um, so it means like the course now, has 12 modules. Uh, I think it's, let's see, one more slide. I'll show you. So these are the modules. Um, and there is a lot of flexibility. We know the more English faculty I spoke through throughout this project, the more I came to understand that um, everyone teaches this a very different way. Um, I've worked on a lot of other of our, our social sciences courses. Um, and there, there's less variation between how it's taught. Um, with that in mind, we wanted to at least provide sufficient coverage and then let you customize and personalize depending on your classrooms, on your own individual needs. Um, so based on these modules, I'll go ahead, without further ado, I'll show you what this looks like in the course. So here I am in Canvas now. Um, again, I mentioned uh, the, the import process is really simple. It's you just go over to import and then uh, within seconds it would show up and this is how it, it, it pulls into your um, LMS. And so you, so you can see each of those 12 modules has come in. Uh, once it's in here, you can use your LMS to customize any way you typically would. So if you're like, oh, the writing process, well, you probably do teach that, but maybe you don't teach research. So maybe you're like, oh, we don't, do, we don't cover research in our comp one. Totally fine. You can delete this entire module without any repercussions, any negative repercussions. So that can be totally um, deleted, ignored. Um, same thing, you can also reorganize things. So I can move this up, I can hide it, minimize it, but I can um, move this module to be at the front. So we do have um, an extensive pacing guide to show you how some of that is done. And so that is also included at the top. So we have, it comes with faculty resources um, that give you a little bit of more information about, to, uh, about how to use our platform. This is called Waymaker. Um, a really neat feature of Waymaker are these faculty tools. And so if you were to click into that, there are some instructions there about how to set up automated messaging um, and this is a really neat feature when students work through what we call the study plans and that's like the bulk of the content for the module. When they work through those, they take little quizzes 
um, and you can get messages um, automatically sent to you, um, but also automatically sent from you to the student um, is depending on a threshold that you set. Um, so you can give them just positive feedback, like good job, you did great on that quiz, good job, or you can give feedback um, saying, hey, it looks like you're struggling on this, um, do you wanna talk about it? So really neat features within Maker, Waymaker itself. Um, if you have more questions on that, we can set something up and talk about that. I, I don't wanna spend my focus there today as I really wanna show you more of the English course. So the pacing guide, I have that open in a separate tab here. Um, but this, I wanted to show the ways that you could use this to personalize it to meet your own needs. And so we have like the traditional sequence here um, listed in the left column. So uh, as you can see, we cover like this module's grammar essentials. That's mostly punctuation, punctuation and usage. Um, the grammar basics is more of the nitty nitpicky, like nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, how to use them. Um, and so we found that there's a, again a lot of variation with grammar and instructors sometimes like it, some don't. And so with that in mind, um, we've this second sequence, um, I know some like to put grammar together at the beginning. So maybe you wanna do the grammar basics and the grammar essentials. Again, it's numbered here um, for like ease of communication. So we can say, let's move module three, module four. But in the course, as you saw, it doesn't come in numbered. Um, which again makes it more flexible for you. So if you want to pull in maybe two study plans into one week, that can be done. And so however you traditionally organize your course. So you could say week one, intro to English, whatever. I mean, so then you could have week one include the success skills module, which is a really valuable module in the way that it, it covers um, like introduction to college, college writing assignments, time management, um, and, and getting, getting students adjusted uh, on the whole. So maybe that's, again, we do recommend including that at the beginning, um, but we do mention that some, um, some of the smaller modules that could be easily combined with others would be success skills, writing essentials, and the analysis and synthesis module. Um, comparatively, those are quite small. These are other larger modules that are maybe a little bit larger. So if you have a 15 or 16 week semester, and if you wanna like prolong these study plans to cover multiple weeks, you can do that here. But this is the really neat feature I wanna show. So tiles, when we click into the course, so I say, oh, uh, we'll use this writing essential study plan. So this is really when we talk about like the features of Waymaker, this is the experience for the student. So within the study plan, we call these things tiles because that's what they look like in front of us here. Um, the first thing students do is uh, a why it matters. And that's just an, an introduction to the modules content, like why, um, why I learn about writing, what matters. I mean, this talks about, I'm just having a thesis statement. And by, so this is like really the first time we ever introduce students to the idea of thesis statements and like traditional five paragraph kind of essays stuff. Um, it gets more nuanced in the next module on writing in college, but here's that first introduction. And so the Why It Matters page introduces them, and then there's a short pretest um, where, so I'm evaluating these two thesis statements. Okay, so I guess on this one, I'm just going to click through this, but you can see um, these questions, reading a paragraph. Um, so there they're analyzing claims effective way to begin an introduction to an essay. Again, I'm just gonna click through all of this quickly. Um, and I don't have the feature turned on, I don't think to make it work, but I will show you. So I did poorly. And so then I would show me my updated study plan. Um, and when the study plan updates, yeah, I don't have it in the demo mode right now, um, but traditionally what, what the student view, they would see these bars at the bottom would then also update um, to indicate, oh, like I, I really need work here or I'm on track because maybe I actually really did well on all the questions about paragraphing. So maybe I'd be on track in that area. And um, so that's really nice. Students can get feedback um, right then off of like where they can focus within the module. Um, and then we work through it pretty traditionally. So all of these pages within the tiles are pages of text and you can see there's a, a bar at the top or you can also navigate uh, moving through the bottom of the screen to the next page. So um, every tile starts with a short introduction like this one. 
And then the meat of the content is here. So this page on thesis statements, you can see this shows you a, a typical page, like all of the, the content pages will look like this in the course. We will have learning objectives listed at the top. Um, then some text, some uh, ex explanation. This one includes a video, um, writing a thesis statement, um, and then lots of practice. And so this is one, uh, this is an interactive we pulled in from the Excelsior Owl. Um, we have over 40, 40, 40 of these included in the course. Um, and you can kind of click through and students can get specific feedback. So I can check my answer show solution, I can try it again. And so all sorts of opportunities um, for engagement and practice, practice, practice. Um, and so you'll see that pretty much on every page, just for the sake of time. So then let's see, it's topic sentences. There's another, so we also have these embedded practice. Um, so every single page has practice. Um, lots of this, this is a little video on how to annotate. Um, all uh, throughout the course, you can see that the content itself is much more robust, much more, um, it's robust, but still simple um, and still straightforward and I think helpful for the students. And so uh, then there's a self check um, that I need to check the formatting on that. I just noticed it was quite large. Um, so the, finding a thesis statement, um, checking, here's another one, just a guess. Next question. So you can see there's some metacognitive skills going on and uh, like how sure am I and I can submit it. Um, and yeah, so I did not to get any of those right. I can take it again. Um, but again, the study plan will update based on my performance. So that's really um, uh, like a sneak peek into the course itself. And so again, what I wanted to show you is that it's customizable in the sense that if I go back to the study plan here, um, I can, each of those tiles can also be moved. So if I go to, um, I was right here in the study plan. Um, so maybe you actually, the writing essentials module, like you actually wanna teach about the thesis statements somewhere else in a different module, or you wanna condense this module and combine this with the next module on writing in college. You can go here and you can actually move the entire tile. So I can move this, um, or I can move just this. Um, oh, so I'm going to move it into this study plan or another one. So I can move it to writing in college. That's an, and I could put it at the beginning. I um, mean, then that would move. And the neat feature about that is if I moved it, it'll move all of the corresponding quiz questions. And so when students are done with a module, they go, there's a putting it together, a summary slide, and then they take a quiz. Um, and so all of those questions will move accordingly. So you don't have to go through and find like, oh, if I deleted this, which quizzes, quizzes correspond? And you don't have to do any of that. So it's very uh, adjustable on your end. Um, so that's pacing. I'm just watching the clock here and I wanna give Audrey sufficient time. So let me just show you um, really quickly a few other um, highlights. Um, the uh, one nice way to get a grand overview of the course um, in the Lumen platform, Form. This is where we author the content behind the scenes. There's the link to that um, here, uh, course contents at a glance. You can see the table of contents for the whole course. Um, and it looks like this. Um, this is a WordPress platform, but I like to do control F for introduction. And then I can see these actually cor correlate to all of the tiles that get pulled into the course. And so this would be a really easy way for you to customize your, your own course and say, oh, I teach research, I don't teach research, or oh, this section on run, run on sentences, I wanna move that up to the, to the first module. And so you can get a good feel for that here. Um, and this is a good way to peruse the whole course. Um, and you can see I have a couple pages open just to show you some of the added features. So this is a page from the grammar module um, about colons. And you can just see the level of practice because we really know that students learn the best by doing and being engaged with the content. And so we've tried to make that um, really clear. So here they're doing punctuation. Here's another um, refresher uh, and, and more, more practice because just talking about colons isn't going to help us understand them. Hey, um, Wendy. The la yes. Ooh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, really quick, Please. there was a question about that, about these try it practice activities and whether 
they can see if students have completed it. So I just wanted to answer that question because we recently released this capability. So now you actually as an instructor can see if students have completed all the practice activities and they come into your LMS gradebook as a participation grade. Yes, thank you. Um, and we do as most are so like I will say is some like this Excelsior Al activity. Um, we do not actually record data on that one, but um, these other practice activities like the multiple choice stuff. Yes, um, we can't get participation grades for that. So the very last thing I want to show just briefly is, is I know some people asked about this beforehand our assignments. Um, so going back to the course here. Um, the home page um, also in the faculty tools at the beginning and resources um, we do include powerpoints offline access so there's an epub for students to use that pacing guide but assignments and this really explains um, and shows you we have an assignment and a discussion available for every module but we totally understand that you probably have your own assignments and so we want to make this very flexible also um, so you can sh see that some are not um, module specific. So we have like a narrative, a comparative essay, illustration, a cause effect, and argumentative essay. And those are split into parts. And so you, there's like an outline, the draft, and the final draft. And the idea here is that in the module, just like in any LMS, you could drag those assignments as to where you want them to go in the course. So maybe if this is like uh, you focus on an argumentative essay, you can pull those um, out and there's also summary explanations of them um, here. So you would place those where you want them in the course. We also have assignments available for every module and those are summarized here. So like this is this is what students are doing. So they're reading um, something and answering questions about it. Um, they are picking a prompt and discussing one of those things for the discussion activity. And so you can go through here and while inside the LMS, you can go through um, and adjust things. Um, so you could go again. So here's all the assignments here. So I can drag these. I can move these into the module where I want them um, or you could delete them, ignore them. So for the sake of time, I will end there, but I could talk about this uh, as you can see <laughs> for a lot longer. Um, so if you have more questions or want to learn more, then you can just reach out. But I will pause there and turn the time over to Audrey to tell us how she uses um, this course for her students. And Wendy, before you stop sharing your screen, um, we did have a question about the ability to add content to this course. So in your yes. LMS for any of these modules, you have the ability, just like you probably do now, um, to add content. So if you wanted to add, for example, anything you have on your own, whether it's links or PDFs or anything like that, you do have that ability because it's in your LMS and you're able to then organize it and add it to wherever you'd like. If you have any more questions about that, we're happy to stay on afterwards, but I didn't want to answer that. Um, someone else asked about the functionality of these quizzes on mobile devices. So as you can see, this lives entirely inside your LMS. So I believe the answer to that, correct me if I'm wrong, Wendy, is that these are mobile compatible if your students can access the LMS in their mobile devices. Absolutely, they, they can. And, and we also, we emphasize accessibility. So all images and things like that are accessible and also um, viewable inside the LMS. Okay, and I can take over now. I'll drive the slides for Audrey. And the last question that just came in is whether the assignments or discussion questions can be altered and definitely, you're totally able to edit those and tweak them to fit your course needs. Yes. So let me turn it over. Um, I will pull up your slides. So the customization of everything for me is what I like so much. So I'll just give you an example. Like um, my students were doing a research paper and they had to conduct an interview. And in the documentation module, there wasn't anything particularly on how to cite an interview. So I added that and then I could add a, qu a question in the quiz about how to cite an interview as well. So it's super easy. and. For me, that's really nice. But what I think is also nice is that for somebody who wants to do a lot of changes, you can do a lot of changes, but if you just wanna use it as is, it's, it's ready to go. And so that flexibility, I think is pretty unique. Um, so uh, when I started using it, hi, Andrew out there. So I had seen the UMIS people um, give a presentation on this writing skills lab a few years ago. And these were the, hey, these were the uh, modules and, oops, 
Um, and so you can see I'm one of those people that has very specific assignments. Like, so my first unit is who we are and how we will succeed together. I have the students do these introductions, a video, um, but I was able to, um, in that unit, put in um, some of the modules. So I'm sure that my composition class looks nothing like the way that it is taught at the UMIS campus, but we were using the same stuff, just totally reorganized. And so that was really fun. Um, next slide. Um, so here's, you can see a little bit of how it works. So um, I've got my learning objectives. Um, and so this is just that overview plan so the students can see where everything is. And you can see, for example, I have on the right hand side under assessments and due dates, students are annotating the syllabus and student schedule. Um, but right above that is the success skills quiz. And that's within the module of um, Waymaker. So, you know, just everything gets integrated the way that I want it to be integrated. So um, the thing that I would really stress about um, the, all of the quizzes and the way that the material is so interactive is that it allows for students to work their way through the material in the way that they want to. Um, and the way that they want to isn't necessarily the way I want them to do it, but um, of course, none of us are like these perfect learners. And I have to admit that I would be that student that um, goes right to the quiz at the end if I feel like I know everything. Um, and so I have students who will only do the self checks. They won't actually read any of the content on the pages and they feel like that's sufficient to get them to learn what they need to learn. And I love that. And if they do the pre-test at the beginning and they do well, I say, that's fine. Go ahead and do the quiz at the end if you're ready. Um, and so the, I really like that. I also like that um, the material for me, it, it allows me to cover, I have a very diverse student body and they come with very different levels of preparation. So I can outsource all of the kind of basic information to Waymaker and um, they can do it at their own pace. So lots of students will say, I never learned this. They can take their time if they're really motivated. Um, they really do take their time and go back to things. For example, in the grammar module, when they learn about colons, my students will always talk about how they never learned how to use a colon on their own. In the next paper, I will see them trying to use the colon. And I really like that. And the kids that don't care about colons, they don't care. So they just move on. Um, the other thing that, so I, I said, uh, it makes time for me for student-centered learning activities. Uh, I really want to stress for my student body, it's really nice that the materials are available immediately. You guys didn't talk about that, but they get um, access to the first two quizzes without having to pay. For my students, if they're um, book vouchers haven't come through yet, they're waiting for financial aid stuff, that's really, really valuable. Um, and similarly, students that join the class late and have to catch up, they can figure this stuff out on their own, at their own pace. So um, w one thing that um, you know, I was a little skeptical about is the multiple choice quizzes thing. Like as English teachers, I don't think we really value multiple choice quizzes. Um, and also my students tend to get very stressed out about quizzes. So um, it's recommended that you allow the students to do the quiz twice. So in that sense, they're doing, I let them do the pretest twice. So the pretest twice, the the um, formative assessments as they're going through the pages and then the, the um, summative at the end twice. And even after all of that, if they get a question wrong, I'll give them a bonus point if they explain to me why they got confused or why it's a bad question or anything at all. Um, so I really try to de-stress the multiple choice. And at the same time, I think it's kind of nice because for my students, there are lots of multiple choice quizzes in their future. So it's not such a terrible thing that they keep practicing, but in a low stakes way. 
next. Okay, so Andrew made this lovely slide. Um, so the blue and the red just show you either strongly agree or agree from three sections of my classes. You can see that, um, you know, the vast majority of my students felt that the modules helped them develop their skills. Um, the I've had students say I teach both the first and second semester composition class and they say things like, are we going to be doing the modules next semester? Um, they talk about how they learn things that um, help them with their other classes. Again, my students talk a lot about how they didn't learn some of these basics and they really enjoy being able to access the material on their phones. I will say my students don't like doing the quizzes on their phones and I think um, I do encourage them to have two, um, two browsers open so that they can be doing the quiz while looking back at the material. So obviously you can't do something like that on the phone. Um, but, um, and somebody also mentioned, like it's really easy if they have a problem on the quiz, it'll show you that they started the quiz but didn't finish it. And it's, re it's very easy to give them an extra attempt in that sense. And so it's, it's very manageable. Um, my students also love the little automated messages in the beginning of the semester when they get the message from me at two in the morning saying great job on the quiz. They respond and say, thank you so much, professor. And they don't seem to notice it's two in the morning. and It's an automated response. And by the time they figure out that it's automated, like the, the good feelings are, you know, are have been established. So that's really nice. Next one. That's it. Great, so I will, um, let's see, I stopped sharing. So hopefully you could see me. I stopped sharing, oh, maybe not. Still sharing, yep. Okay, let's try this again. All right, so thank you so much, Audrey and Wendy for giving us that walkthrough and Audrey sharing your experience. We're basically, we're actually a little over time. So we understand that some of you have to drop off. Really quick, one of the things I wanted to share was how you can view the course if you want to see it right now and look at the content. Um, you can actually go to our website, which is lumenlearning.com. And actually, <laughs> we are highlighting this course right now. So you'll see it right here pop up in a banner. So you can actually click and it'll take you right to the course content. If not, if you click on our course catalog, you'll be able to do a course search and you can click by English and communications here or just browse through the whole catalog. Um, and if you do hit English communications, you'll see all the courses come up and it's English composition one. So once you click on that, you'll see a brief description and then you can view course content and outcomes. And this is where you can also request access to the course in your learning management system. So this is a form that comes to us and we'll reach out and send you a course cartridge if you'd like. Um, so we did have a couple questions come up. Um, one of them was the cost. So the cost of this course and actually all our courses is $25 per student. Um, so that's that. And then the following, the la other question that came up just looking, oh, was actually about the CORET course, which I believe that Wendy mentioned. Um, but Wendy, do you mind just sharing a little bit about that course and when it's coming? Yeah, definitely. So I don't want to take too much more time, but um, I did want to say, so the CORET course is going to be built out of the same core content that we just showed. So if you are, you're looking at like the learning outcomes and like if you review the modules in comp one, it's going to be the same. We, did, we brainstormed a lot of different directions with, comp, with the co-rec component, and we found that really we wanted to, especially in the online setting, as most of you um, are at least hybrid, if not fully online, um, we wanted to think of like, how could we replicate like the the one-on-one -on -one that a lot of co-rec um, models provide, where you get like the additional lab time. So you're doing it's the same, you have the same big project, but you're having the more one-on-one, -on -one, the more scaffolding, uh, like the, uh, that, that increased interaction. And so what we're building out are additional modules. So every, um, there'll be like a, a, a writing workshop component for every single module. So if there's like the module on analysis, then we have a writing workshop component. Um, that is also, it's a, its own little, it's like a mini study plan. Um, and that gives them scaffold experience. So it, it kind of, we like looked at the, the, the project and the learning outcomes and we tried to take it back and scale it back and say, okay, if like, how do I approach this? And so we're doing that and also comes with like a, a really lightweight assignment, um, like a, a writing workshop so students can work through it. 
um, and fill that out as they complete it. And so we thought that that was like the best, um, most inclusive way to, to provide that opportunity for additional practice. This. And so we'll have more information on that coming. And if you'd like to learn more, um, please reach out. I'd be happy to like show you some of those pieces in development. Um, but that's uh, that's slated to come out at the end of the month. And um, one thing I'll add to that, that's also very flexible. So like the $25 cost um, could be for either. Like, so if you're teaching traditional comp one, but you want to use the co rec component, so you want to also have some of these mini modules available, um, you could choose to go with that or that option. Um, it, it's all, again, extremely flexible, so. Thanks, Wendy. Um, yeah, and actually, uh, I failed to mention, I used to teach composition too, so this is definitely something, you know, thinking back to even, you know, courses like Comp2, where students may not be covering all those topics, but need a refresher on some of those skills, that's something you could also consider. So there were a couple questions that came up. So um, actually, Audrey mentioned, which I, fa I failed to mention, that that $25 cost students have the options of purchasing that, purchasing that at their bookstore or buying directly from us using a credit card. So those are purchase options for, there are purchase options for students. Um, we, I was asked um, how long students have access to the material. So typically it's a semester. Remember this course lives inside your LMS. However, um, there is the option to have downloadable content. And as you saw, the students actually always have access to the course content on our website or if they use that downloadable content link. Um, and then, ooh, so this is, I think Heidi will follow up with you. That this is a great question, but I think maybe we might need a little more time to share, but maybe Audrey, you have a couple points on this. Um, what are some of the best practices for using Waymaker functionality with a hybrid course? So I taught a hybrid course um, in the spring before we went um, remote. And so what I was able to do was um, every time we came to class, so we, every other week, um, students were doing interactive activities, um, lots of presentations, lots of conferencing, stuff like that. So um, they were doing their Waymaker and whatever, reading and writing on the off weeks, and then coming together was always about sharing and engaging and um, active learning. So that was really nice. Thank you. Um, and I did have a question. We do have some partnerships, um, for example, with SUNY, the State University of New York, um, which allows actually for the coursework to, meet, to be made available to students at no cost. So there are some SUNY faculty on here. Your students get access to Waymaker at no cost. Um, and we'll follow up with you with a link um, where you can request that. Um, I think that was um, it for now, unless there are any other questions, I'm happy to unmute folks if you prefer to ask them live or feel free to type them in the chat. Um, but while we wait for some more questions, if there are any, I just wanted to thank you all again for joining us. Um, it's great to see all your names on the attendee list and thanks to Audrey and Wendy for being presenters. Um, and we hope you all stay healthy and safe out there. Um, and if there's anything we can do for you and your students, don't hesitate to contact us. Again, our email where you can reach us is info at lumenlearning.com. And you will be getting a follow-up email. Feel free to respond to that. And um, I will be sharing the recording with you. So feel free to rewatch this super fun webinar or share it with colleagues. Um, I don't see any other questions, so we'll stay on. But thanks again. Have a great rest of your Friday and afternoon. And really appreciate you joining us. Thanks so much, everyone.